the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kid stealing, woo, wheel of demon, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kid stealing, wheel and dealing, limo jet flying. Like questioning you See we the best dressed So come and get blessed with the crew Not one but two Different ways to slaughter your crew Command and tat across the chest I guess she blessed with the truth People want to see them checks Representation of proof Living through my elders Trying to resonate to the youth But ain't nothing to get my flash on Legevity is heavily embedded in my melanin Layman terms I last long My crowd repetitive I'm smoother than real silk Lyrical cash cow Who can't cry over spilled milk We in here You talking to the road Wearing diamond ring, wearing kiss, stealing, willing, dealing, limo jet flying. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. Rolex wearing diamond ring, wearing kiss, stealing, willing, dealing, limo jet flying. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. This ain't no normal situation. This preparation with greatness. Industry full of fakeness is really up for the taking. See, life is what happens to you more so how you take it don't get stripped of your knowledge and mentally leave you naked i like to live otherwise i'm sorry that i'm fresh to death i put the polo and apologize see black sun we ain't nothing like the mother guys quit to socialize you organize then we mobilize Woo! off the deep end like a scuba diver and no confusion just keep it pushing like uber drivers Woo! business fresh just like a supervisor in a gucci visor can't find a smoother rhymer you talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. We rip flaring on us. You talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. We rip flaring on us, flaring on us. Just tell me what is we doing, get into it, okay, look, I'ma say this and keep it moving. My boy Scotty, man, he off of the leash, black grab, paying college, I'm glad that he called me. Walk it, cause we all been taught that talk is cheap, even primetime knows, Scott, for the HBCU streets. It's your boy Scotty. Listen, I'm back again with another one. You already know. Happy Friday. All right. Happy Friday. You already know what it is. Uh, we live in effect back at the crib, back in Atlanta. 
Uh, shout out to everybody that got me down to Daytona. Appreciate everybody um, and everything like that. We came back uh, last night. Uh, will not be clearly will not be there for the Roland Martin um, Town Hall. Uh, what they got going on down there. So listen, like I said, man, them, them Daytona hotels is not cheap. All right, them Daytona hotels is not cheap. All right, not not even the least bit. But uh, glad I had a great experience down there. Appreciate everybody that helped us get down there, reach our goal of a thousand dollars, and made that happen. Appreciate you all. Listen, all right. If you want to be a part of why I love my HBCU, listen. I know I gave you guys multiple dates. What I'm going to try to do is start squeezing people in on this weekend, and it's pretty much going to be like 15 minute, 15 minute increments, right? So it's like one o'clock, one fifteen, one thirty, two o'clock, like stuff like that. So um, if you have reached out to me, I'm going to reach out to you today, and I'm going to try to squeeze you in between Saturday and Sunday of this week. All right. So if you're interested. There's a link in the description below. Uh, do the Google form. Put your email in there. We'll email you guys out today and set you up with a time frame. All right. So it'll be like I said, a 15 minute increment of how that works. So if you could, if you're still interested, or why I love my HBCU, just asking questions about what you do, why you love your HBCU, why'd you go there, blah, blah, blah. All right. If you're interested in that, go to the Google form in the description below as well. If you want, if you're also interested in consulting. With me about your podcast, YouTube channel, whatever you want to talk about, ask me a couple questions to help yourself grow. By all means, I'm open. Uh, you can set up a consultation call with me, video or phone call in the description below as well. All right. Let's get into it today. Okay, let's get into it today. Uh, I don't really want to say breaking news, but news is broke that Bethune Cookman will go with their former alum or alma mater, whatever the hell you want to call it. Raymond Woody Jr. I'm just gonna say Raymond Woody, but it's a junior on there. Listen, guys, I'm gonna tell you straight up. We don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. No, like <laughs> I don't care. I, I really, I, I, there's no other way to describe it. I don't care, okay? I don't. It is nothing special about this. I don't, I, I don't, listen. <coughs> it, it, it's not as bad as hiring the real estate agent, Coach, uh, Coach Robinson. It's not as bad as hiring him because at least my man got some coaching experience. But, bro, like, who cares? Who really cares? OK, like that's why people was hit me up. Oh, Scotty. Uh, you know, we got a new coach. Are you going to go live? I'm like, I'll go live when I good and well, please. OK, this is not something that I got to stop my day and be like, oh, my God, Raymond Woody got a job. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. So, I mean, I'm going to go through some stuff. I'm going to talk about some stuff. But at the end, the core of me, I don't give a damn. All right? I really don't. I really don't. And I don't care how people want to flip it. I don't care. So shout out to Coach Hayes. I know he did a live show about it. I'm going to bring up some stuff that he clipped up. All right? Uh, I, I clipped it off of his YouTube. That's why it's a little blurry. I apologize. This is his resume. Now, if we want to keep it a whole book, it's literally he is Willie Taggart's henchman. This Willie Tiger boy, wherever he go, Willie Raymond Woody was right behind him. Wherever Willie Tiger went, Raymond Woody went right with him. Coaches do it all the time, so it's not nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my guy. He rolling with me. All right. So it ain't. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just really he's Willie Taggart's henchman. Like, oh, he Willie going there? I'm going there. Willie going there? So this is his first opportunity to be a head coach. Congratulations. We don't care. Let me tell you. All right. <laughs> all right. Just, just want to keep that keep that in the forefront, all right? So he's been to uh, Western Kentucky, USF, Oregon, Florida State, uh, Florida Atlantic. Congratulations. All right, moving on. Now, this was pretty interesting. Shout out to Coach Hayes again. All right, uh, Woody boasts an impressive resume on recruiting trail, impacted Florida State immediately as he was ranked the number two recruiter in the ACC by 247 in 2018. I, I believe that deserves a golf clap. 
believe that deserves a golf clap. Shout out to Raymond Woody for being named the number two recruiter of the ACC. Shout out to him. But this is um, this is where I draw the the like eh. like some people, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that he can't recruit. I'm not saying that he can't do it. What I'm saying is a lot of people don't understand, and you might be like, "Oh, he's a Bethune Cookman alum and whatever." Like, bro, this Bama has been this Bama has not touched back at Bethune in how long? Like, look, come on, the man been like he been gone for at least eleven years. So him walking back into Bethune, like he's about to be the recruiter of the year. Like you're not about to out recruit fam. And what Coach Ress is doing down there, you're not about to out recruit uh, Alabama State and what they doing. You're not about to out recruit Alabama A and M. You won't even. You can't even out recruit Alcorn. I just, I, I just like. I always think, is it the facilities or the recruiter, right? Because I look at McNair. He don't got a lot going down there, but he gets some great players, and they're, they're, they're really big on player development, right? Say, like FAMU, their field house looks like a she shed. But Coach Rez gets them in there, and he signs some quality guys that want to come back to Florida and play for a great program, and Willie been winning and stuff like that. So I just I'm very curious to see how Raymond Woody does in recruiting at a school that's been in the spotlight for all the bad stuff that's been going on recently. And Ed Reed being the polarizing figure that he is and being the well-known name, it's been getting pushed out because of Ed Reed. So before you just thought that the HBCU community knew that you was bad. Now everybody knows that you bad. I don't know if y'all remember in Coach Carter when he started laughing. He's like, what you was so funny? He's like, you thought it was bad that we knew you couldn't read. Now the whole world know your ass can't read. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's it just, it's okay when it's like, oh, just us, the family know you broke. You know what I'm saying? And nobody else know you broke. But when everybody know you broke, you broke, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. So, to me, listen, man. Bro, you you went from, you went from this. You went for, you went from Hall of Famer, you know what I'm saying? Miami, Miami alum, you know what I'm saying? All the resources in the world to Little Bill. To Little Bill, that's what we doing? You went from a Hall of Famer to Little Bill? No, oh, what is we talking about, bro? What is we talking about right now? How you go from, from this to this? No, oh. oh, come on, man. Little Bill, bro, this is what we doing? Oh my God, he's a Bethune Cookman alum. Oh my God, oh my God, he's so bro. You need more on the table than Little Bill. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you just need more to the table than Little Bill coaching your team. Oh, oh, he's a former alum. What he gonna do for you? Bring back Stevie Bags? What are you going to do? Bring back Rashawn Mathis? Like, he going to bring back Sean Alvin White? Like, what the hell he going to do for you? And my issue with this is what fake Rick Fox said was that, you know, you might as well kept Terry Sims. If you going to bring in little Bill, you might as well have kept Terry. Went from an inexperienced coach to years of experience and an alum. It's a lot of alums that been getting their ass whooped lately. I'm just, I don't, I don't, I don't think that all alums mean that you're gonna win. If I, if I do say so myself, I'm just, I, I, I that's just me though. Just because you got an alum with coaching experience doesn't mean that you're going to win. 
and doesn't mean it's going to help your resources. Because that was the whole reason they went in the celebrity coach way was to get resources. And now that Florida Classic has just become trash. It, I would be selling my tickets back if I was going. Because first, I was going to buy my Florida Classic. Oh, shit. You talk, I had my Florida Classic tickets on the waiting list. Now I'm giving them back for free. Gave it to the first black homeless man because you got to give it to the black homeless man because it's, it's Black History Month. Gave it to the first black homeless man I saw. Here, you want these Florida Classic tickets? You want these? You want? You want to? You want? You might want. If you start walking now, you probably could get there when the game starts. Come on, man! I'm not. I like nobody. Want, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a part. Of, I don't want to. Come on, man! This is grabbing at straws. Oh, oh! Let's go get little Bill, bro. I've talked to a couple people that have been around Raymond, and they say this is this is too much. This is too much. Your first head coaching job? This is your first head coaching job? And this is the job you're going to take? Like, you don't have no re – like, bro, like, you don't have no resources to bring other than your knowledge of the game. But nobody's saying that you can't coach the damn game. We're just saying how are you going to stop them from getting mowed in the administration? How – how – I mean, like, bro, bro, like, how are you going to stop Mo getting in helmets? Can Little Bill stop you from having Modi helmets? Can Little Bill get you a practice field? Can Little Bill get Mo from the gloves? Can Come on, man. What are we doing, bro? We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. Dog, you, this is, this is a, dog, come on, man. Let, let, bro. Bro, stop. Let's stop. This, this is a straight rebound, bro. How can anybody be excited about this? If I, if I wasn't a Bethune Cookman alum, if I was a Bethune Cookman alum, I'd be. I would be on an emotional roller coaster. You're like that little Asian do emotional damage. I would be so just. Heartbroken. We went from we went from being at the highest of the high. We riding the Superman ride. We got Ed freaking Reed. And then we go to Little Bill. Little Bill. Like what? <laughs> this, this ninja had to be on like, he had to be like. The backup to the backup to the backup. Little Bill, now word on the street, now word on the street is that Kevin Sumlin was the head choice. But word on the street is that he turned them Bamas down because he was like, no, why would I want this job? Why would I want this job? Come on, man. You know what this reminds me of? You know what this reminds me of? You know how you got like, you know how you got like the white boy at the gym? You know what I'm saying? And he got the basketball and he got all the armbands and the hoodies and the sweatshirts on. He, and he out there like, you got next. You got next. <laughs> you got next. And you're like, shoot, I hope he doesn't come ask me because I only got four. <laughs> Can I get with you? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, that's what this reminds me of. You're like, shoot, I don't have a fifth. God damn, like, we gotta, like, I do got next, but oh, oh yeah, can I, can I run with you? Like, this is what this reminds me of. Is like, little Bill was just out there. <laughs> you got next. You need a coach. Do you need a coach? Okay, I'm rocking with you. Okay, let's go. Like, dog, come on, man. Like, this this ain't it, bro. This ain't it. This ain't it. Oh, my God, man. This ain't it, bro. This ain't it. This ain't it, man. I <laughs> dog, I swear to God. But dude wouldn't get a dime out of me. 
They wouldn't get another dime out of me. If I was an alum of Bethune-Cookman, first of all, I ain't paying no $31,000 to be in no more. That's just me, all right? But if I was a Bethune-Cookman alum, they wouldn't get another dime out of me. I'm not about to watch Little Bill go down in flames. Okay, you miss signing day, right? Everybody knows your shit is trash. Everybody knows all your, your facilities is absolute garbage. Okay? Spazzatura. All right? That's Italian for trash, if you don't know. I'm, 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 world, I'm, a, I'm a world leader out here, world traveler, baby. All right? Everybody knows that. They know The players know they could have had Ed Reed. Now they got little Bill, who's never been a head coach. Come on, man. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing me, man. Stop, stop it. If I was fam you, I would be laughing all the way to the bank right now. We ain't losing another Florida Classic. We ain't losing another Florida Classic as long as little Bill is head coach. That's how I would feel. That's if I was fam you, I would be, I would be laughing to the bank. As long as Little Bill is head coach of Bethune Cookman, I I just I just couldn't do it, bro. I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Listen, you you already in the hole, right? You're already in the hole. Why not take your time to go find somebody that you really feel can make an impact? It, it doesn't have to be Little Bill. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but don't cook men alone. Let me let me tell you some other stuff. Since everybody, since we since we talking about stuff, right? I talked to I talked to somebody very close to the program and been around the program for a while. I think about 20 years, right? Graduated, taught at Bethune Cookman. And they said, and she said, I and I quote, this is what she said. I, and I want to make this very clear. She said this, she said, it's really funny how Stevie Bags had the nerve to come back to Bethune-Cookman during this situation. But when he was playing in the league and Bethune-Cookman asked for him to come back and donate and give his time, he said, nah, I'm too good for that. Nah, Bethune-Cookman ain't do nothing for me. That's what she said. Now, I'm just repeating what she said. Now, you can believe me or not. But it's just real funny to me. I just want to throw that in there. He caught a stray. It just really bothered me because he had a cross bag and he had the little fake. Yeah, I just, he he gonna catch some strays from here. He gonna he gonna catch a lot of strays on this channel. Stevie bags with a cross bag. A grown ass man with a cross bag. What the what the? F anyway, I'm I, that's neither here nor there. All right. So, but man, listen. If 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 HBCU Band Talk is happy that Little Bill is his new coach, congratulations. You and Little Bill can sit on the L column, okay? Consist you and Little Bill can sit right next to each other at the Fam You Classic when you're getting your ass whooped. Okay? I mean, whatever, however, however you want to do it, HBCU Band Talk. Oh my god, he was my first choice. I bet. He was my he was my first choice. He was my first choice. Nobody gives a damn about no little bill. He had the second highest recruit. That's at the ACC. That ain't you. That's you taking credit. Come on, bro. Like, oh, he had the second highest recruiting class in the ACC at Florida State with Florida State facilities with a Florida State name. Y'all Bamas ain't got no name. See that's see that's the illogical thinking that these Bamas have. Oh my God, he's gonna do that here at Bethune. He's gonna come up. He's gonna set all kinds of records. Little Bill's about to be. Little Bill ain't about to do shit. Are you serious? Just because you were second in recruiting at Florida State, mind you, Florida State, mind you, Florida State. You ain't Florida State. You barely Edward Waters. You barely Edward Waters. Now, why would a top athlete, and somebody please explain this to me. Why would a top athlete choose Bethune-Cookman over FAMU? 
Don't worry, I'll wait. Why would somebody choose Little Bill over Willie Simmons? Why would somebody choose Little Bill over Coach Raz? Why would somebody choose a city council stadium over Bragg? Why would somebody – somebody got to make that make sense to me. Somebody got to make that make sense to me. Talking about some, he did it at Florida State. Y'all can't even compete with Edward Waters. I would be surprised if you out-recluded Florida Memorial, if I'm being honest with you. I don't even know if Daytona State got a college, a football team. But if they got an intramural team, you could pr you probably won't out-recruit the intramural team. Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Little Bill. See, that's what Ed Reed gave you. Ed Reed gave you excitement, for one. Ed Reed gave you Recruits that you could not get based off Bethune Cookman. See, that's see, that's what you're forgetting. HBCU band talk. He's not walking in there with a Florida State Seminole across his chest. He's walking in there with a BC. And then when kids say, "Hey, coach, what's that BC on your on your chest?" and they say Bethune Cookman, he's gonna then ask, "Is that the school that Ed Reed left? Is that the school that fired Ed Reed because of the trash?" Because of the gate, because of the homeless people, because of the crackheads, because of the mold. I I'm good on that, coach. I'm good on that, coach. Like, stop playing with me right now, man. Stop playing with me. Y'all, y'all alums be smoking. Y'all, y'all alums be smoking crack. Y'all, y'all alums be drinking the delusional juice, right? Y'all bamas be drinking delusional juice. Because if you think Bethune Cookman is about to resurrect something. Something? I'm going to say it again because I got 482 people here and most of y'all probably didn't hear what I said. I don't know if you watched the movie Coach Carter. In the movie Coach Carter, the kids are laughing because, remember, if you don't remember, they got the, the gym shut down. And he's laughing. He's like, what's so funny? He said, you thought it was bad enough that we knew your ass couldn't read. Now the whole world know your ass can't read. That's the same way I feel about Bethune. Like, you thought it was bad that HBCUs knew what y'all was working with in the facilities. Now the whole world know y'all Bamas ain't got no facilities. Mm, all right. All right, but y'all wanted a little bill, though. Hey, you know, hey, let's each his own. All right. Listen, man. Listen. Somebody got to fire fake Rick Fox. Somebody got to somebody gotta take the 80 hat off of. He need to take. He need to just fire himself. The AD needs to go ahead and go ahead and fire himself. That's what he needs to do. Just absolutely go ahead and replace yourself. Just be the basketball coach. Go find another AD because this hire with Little Bill is not it for me. Okay? It's not it for me. That's just what it is. So, I mean, it's out here just, they don't know, no, don't nobody know, don't nobody know nothing. Don't nobody know nothing. Out here in these streets, but you know, teach his own, man. You know what I'm saying? Teach his own. Now, listen. This is this is my thing. This is my thing, right? Because I want to I want to be very clear of why I feel the way I feel. The reason I feel so strongly about how bad this season is going to go for Bethune is this: is because. Everybody in the SWAC has been elevating. Since Dion touched down, everybody in the SWAC has been taking their game to the next level. Valley, UAPB is even trying. PV and A-10 fans, they trying. You know what I'm saying? Alabama A&M, Alabama State, everybody's trying to take the next step forward. But the only school that's actually hit the reset button and gone backwards is Bethune. So my, my question is this, is that how is a team that is, is hitting the reset, that has hit the reset button on everything, supposed to be, like, 
What is the expectation? You know, let's skip all this other junk. What are your expectations? That's my question. Because what's the expectation? We just want to win the Florida Classic. If that's your expectation, congratulations. You probably win it whenever Willie Simmons decides to leave. Because this is my thing. If you're not hiring for championships, then what the hell are you hiring for? That's my thing. If you got a guy and said, hey, we're okay with being four, four and seven for however long, what in the freak are the expectations for this team? He's not better than Willie. He's not better than Jackson. He's not better. He won't. Listen, he won't be. I, I, I can stand on that right now. He won't be better than Alabama State. He won't be better than Alabama a and He won't be better than Jackson. And he won't. So what the hell did you hire him for? What, are you, what is the point of hiring? If he doesn't make you a championship contending team, if he doesn't push you into the, in a, into a sphere of like, hey, we got him, so he's going to move us up the chart. He don't do this. He don't. What research? What research? How can I research when he's never been a head coach? How can I research? And what has he accomplished other than following Willie Taggart? Other than following Willie Taggart, what has he accomplished? Also, oh, my God, he got the second best recruiting class at a freaking Florida State. <laughs> Using Florida State. Make that make sense. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. What are the what this feels like? And I'm, I'm gonna be a whole buck with y'all. What it feels like is just something to say. We hi we hired somebody, right? So somebody, so get off our backs. We got somebody. That's what this hire feels like. It feels like we got somebody. Move on. Get away from us. Stop talking about us. We made a hire. We good. That's what it feels like. Now, who's to say he don't come in and turn? He, he can, listen, if Jesus can walk on water, he can turn a football program around. I know that's pretty extreme, but it's possible. It's possible. Like, like, like uh, uh, on uh, Cinderella, the black version. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't, I don't see how he makes a jump to be, I don't even say how he makes a jump to be third in his own division. Because to me, I don't understand what I don't I, I don't understand for one, I don't understand why players will choose to go to Bethune Cookman. That's the first thing for me. But there's I mean, there's so much talent in the world, you can find anybody. I just don't understand why players will go to Bethune Cookman. That's just me. But if you want a free education, do you? You know what I'm saying? But I'm 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 very I'm very curious to see how this plays out. I'm super super curious to see how this plays out because I'm gonna tell you right now. I thought that I thought the Alabama stay higher was bad. I would have to put this below Eddie Robinson. I don't know. I don't know why. I just have a bad feeling about this. I think I gave the Eddie Robinson hire like a D. I would absolutely have to give this hire an F. Or in Maryland, we would say an E. Like, there's, I, like, yeah, I don't have no. I just have a bad feeling about this in, just in this entirety. And listen, man. When it go down, when it goes, when it goes down in flames, I'm gonna be right there laughing my ass off. I'm gonna just be like, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. But listen, listen, man, but through Cookman, alums, fans, friends, associates, do what y'all do, man. Right, and listen, listen, when you go to the games, just go to the games to enjoy the band like HBC football used to be. <laughs> Listen, 
don't be don't be sad. Don't look at the scoreboard. Just go enjoy the bands like HBCU football used to be. Just go there and have a good old time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, Tonto, jump on it, jump on it. Don't even look at the scoreboard. Don't even look at, don't even look, just have them play some Beyonce stuff or something. You know what I'm saying? Just, I bet you, you can see. Just, that's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Just shout out, you know, and let's go, wild okay. Whatever y'all do. Whatever y'all bamas do, and whatever y'all do, just do what y'all do. Just, just, you know, just go for the band. And just join the halftime. You know what I'm saying? Go for the band. After halftime, if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. You know what I'm saying? That's your, that's your right. That's your absolute right. There are two participants in the conference. Uh, 6625 coming to you. Hey, caller, you, you live. Hey, caller, you live. Hello. Okay, first of all, I would just like to say it don't matter who they put or who they got to put in that position. Hey, turn your background down. They, turn, um, turn, turn, your, up the trash turn your background down. Turn your, back, turn your background oh, down. Turn your background down for me. Yeah, yeah, you're good. And then say what you're saying again. Okay, it don't matter who they got until they get rid of who who they have now. Come on! Because it's just trash. Trash! It's just trash. Come on, talk your mess. I have you know, two grown children who have gone to college, one in engineering and one is currently a medical student. And um, I wouldn't pay for that. $120,000 for the mode? Are you serious? I've been an RN for 30 years. I wouldn't dare put my child in that position. Me and my husband have been fortunate enough to be able to pay for our kids to go to school. But I'm going to tell you this. I wouldn't pay for that. Period. There's no way I will put my child in harm's way for that. That's ridiculous. They should be ashamed that they even put kids in that position. Kids who are vulnerable, people who are just looking for a way out, trying to, you know, uplift themselves. And this is what you do to them. And now you bring little Bill to the to the to the scene like it's supposed to make everything okay. Is he coming with a trash truck? <laughs> Is he coming with some mops? Is he coming with sponges? Is he gonna clean and and tear down the walls? Because that's what they need to do first. Tear down the damn walls. The hell with hey little Bill. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> we need some change in the situation. A hundred and twenty thousand dollars for that? You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Where's the accountability and all of that? <laughs> Y'all plants way too much, way too much. And and I'm gonna tell you something. And it's not just this school, it's a lot of schools. It's a lot of people in the community that try to play these kids. Because I remember when we were trying to find housing just for our kids. For my daughter when she was going up to um, San Francisco, and they tried to play us and give us a trash mildew place for three thousand dollars a month. Had I not got my butt on that plane and went and checked that place out, because what they showed on the internet wasn't what we saw when we went in person. So that's how they play them, you know. And they want to be grown and they think dependent and all that, and they they will settle for that just not to complain. So you snatch their butt up out of there. And, and bring them back home. But I'll be damned if I pay $120,000 for little Bill to come up in there and not do nothing. If he ain't got a trash truck with him, if he ain't got a, uh, some architects with him to, to build that damn school back up, little Bill needs to take his ass back on to PBS or whatever kids show that he came from. But one thing he don't need to do is get paid to do the same thing that they already damn well doing. And that's shucking and jiving, shucking and jiving, playing games with these kids' lives. <laughs> Take their toxic asses and sit down some damn where and stop playing. Thank you thank for your time. You. No, I really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> she said he didn't take his little ass. He said he didn't take his little bill ass back to PBS. Listen, listen, man. 
Now, don't go out here in these streets and start calling this man Lil Bill and don't be like Scotty said. No, 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 no. Don't do me like that, bro, because I already got y'all already get me kicked out of games and stuff like that, man. That was that was my that was my comparison. I compared him to Little Bill. Y'all don't have to do that. All right. Y'all y'all better than me. Be better than me. OK, don't be like me. Be better than me. OK, come on, man. Be better than me. Hey, Mr. Sergeant, coming to you. Little Bill, <laughs> hi, friend. Yo, why, why uh, so Scotty, I'm sorry I had to come in with the uh, whistle, but uh, you know, I, I just, I'm just blown away by that explosion. Uh, excuse me, by that comparison. That was just wonderful. Now, when I heard it, I heard that last name, and the first thing I thought of was Toy Story, and then I was like, okay, I'm sure Scotty's gonna use like Woody and uh, you know, put him up on the horse and put him up on the film. And then I said, no, you know what? Scotty will probably do something totally different that I can't imagine or think of or imagine because, you know, he's with uh, the, the prophetess, so she, she's got him reading Ephesians 3 and 20. So he would probably do something just amazing. And you surpass all the expectations, sir. I think everywhere this brother goes, people are going to be looking at him and saying, hello, friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I couldn't hold it. All right. So, um, I just want to let you know that the moratorium that I asked all the Rattlers to be on and not talk about the food cookman while they're dealing with that, uh, with their stuff, with their trash, uh, is over. You may now, uh, dis, discuss and trash the food cookman at your leisure. Lastly, sir, thank you for this wonderful program. Uh, and I heard you call me out on the last show about my donation. <laughs> I'm going to make up for us, sir. Today's payday, and I'm going to see what I can do. We love you. But you know, I got to get my tithe in first, or the prophetess may uh, catch me on one of these calls by, Larry, you didn't give your tithe, and then that would cause me to, to lose my water, bro. My bladder would explode on that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I got I to gotta get my, my money where it's supposed to go to first. All right. Peace. All right. Appreciate it, Mr. Sergeant. Appreciate it. Listen, man, I'm going to I'm gonna say this again. Don't be me, Okay. There's something wrong with me mentally. I ain't, I ain't even gonna hold you. Well, I'm not gonna put that in the atmosphere because Keith be like, "Don't say that. That's Kingdom Activation." There's just some, I'm just very, listen. I was the only child, man. Mr. Campbell said it on here. My girl said it. I just I would just I talked to myself as a kid. It was just me, me myself, and I. I ain't do imaginary friends because my imagination don't work like that. But it was just me, so I had to be creative. You know what I'm saying? And I'm from the DMV, so you know. We we get it down. We get down with the get down. You know what I'm saying? So don't be like me. Okay. This is this is my infomercial. Don't be like me. Be better than me. Okay. I know, I know y'all see this man as little Bill, but there's no <laughs> but, there's, <laughs> but there's no need to reference him as that. I'm gonna reference him as that because I have a problem with names. I, I do I do well with nicknames. So, but don't be me. Be better than me. Okay, be better. Hey, Drake, coming to you. It was up, man. What's um, up? this job requires more than coaching. Like, like they say that in the NFL, how like some jobs require just more than coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but in the NFL, they could just we could just pay you until you accept the job, like they did Sean Payton. You know, um, even in college, they say. Some of these jobs, all you got to do is coach. Like, like you know, we're not gonna say all HBCUs um, are like that, but yeah. there are definitely some. This is one of those. Who cries more than? And the only thing Bethune Cookman got going for them is that they're a D one school. That's it. That's good. But I go to junior college and D two before I go to Bethune Cookman. Yeah, I'll take, you know, I'll take my I feel, ass to Benedict I, real quick. I ain't even going to hold you. Man, man, I I know D, D2 HBCUs that are doing better than Bethune. Um, like I said, he just has a – this requires more than X's and O's, you know, and they got who they could got because no one in their right mind – this is a lose-lose situ situation. 
is a lose lose situation. He cannot win. Like he can't. I mean, even his boy Willie is in Colorado. So Willie must must Willie couldn't must have couldn't have got him on the staff. So um yeah, this is a lose lose situation. This is gonna require more than X's and O's. He's gonna need a lot of help. I like I wanna know what assistant coaches he's gonna be able to get. Cause I'm not leaving high school to turn to Bethune. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Like in Florida, I'm not leaving. You know, and I've been in Florida, but I'm not. If I'm up in Heritage or Queenis or you know any of them big schools in Florida, I'm not leaving to be an assistant at Bethune. When you know they already probably not gonna be able to pay me. I'm probably making more as a state employee in Florida. Yeah. And I'm win on top of that. Nah. Yeah, this is a lose lose situation. Hey man, appreciate the call though, Dre, as always, my boy. <clears throat> Listen, everybody else, I was the only one calling him a real estate agent. And I called him Coach Rob now because he, he earned my respect with the, you know, with the Dion not swag thing. I thought that was absolutely amazing. But, you know, so I called him Coach Eddie Rob now, but I was the only one calling him a real estate agent. Everybody else was calling him Coach Rob, Coach Eddie Rob. So, you know, Coach E Rob, whatever they called him. So, you know what I'm saying? So, that was just me. That wasn't everybody. That was just me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's just, that was just me. Uh, <clears throat> 6031 coming to you. Hey, calling you live. All right. This is our Incog Negro. Mm. And uh, I'm just, so, Scotty, what is the uh, issue? Well, I heard your issues, but um, from my understanding and my reading, the, what do you call it, the survey online showed that Raymond Woody was the highest choice for everybody who voted online. So if that's what they wanted, why is it that big of a deal? I, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think he's a big deal higher. I mean, so I don't. I really listen. I wouldn't even want to do this show. I don't even give a damn. Like I really, if I'm being honest, I I don't care what Bethune Cookman wanted. If it wasn't Ed Reed, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really rock it with it. I, I think Kevin Sumlin. I think Kevin Sumlin would have been a, a a a good hire based off the name. But I've heard some off the field stuff, so I don't know if that would have if that would be a good you know a good fit for Bethune Cookman. Um, I listen, man. I don't. The situation that Bethune Cookman takes a special type of person, in my personal opinion. And the reason that I feel the way I feel is this is because fake Rick Fox said, We're turning in a different direction to invest in our football. And he specifically said the reason he went to Ed Reed is so Ed Reed could help him with the resources that the school was lacking. Now, how does little Bill help you with the same issue? that you felt you needed Ed Reed for. Somebody make that make sense to me. Okay, so so I have a question for you. So most of the time we have a board, right? Board of trustees, board of directors in a company or in a school for this uh, particular uh, circumstance, right? You always have those people are charged to raise money, right? That's what their one of their main roles is to do is to raise money, right? Yeah. Okay. So the alumni also for any school is another part that normally raises money, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if the alumni normally raises money and the alumni wasn't giving money because of, you know, whatever reasons they had, and now they have someone that they can feel that would be, um, more of a uniting uh, of a person, right? And uh, will galvanize the energy behind the, you know, the community, uh, the state of Florida, and the alumni. If they start giving, and other people start giving, wouldn't that be resources? Let me ask you. Since since you have a hard time answering questions, I'm gonna just do what you did. Let me ask you a question, sir. The question that I have for you is. If I give you a million dollars and you don't spend it on what it needs to be spent on, did that million dollars help? It don't matter. Okay. It don't You're matter. Right that, hey, you it, right. 
You're right. You're right. And and and, and right, right now, I thought we were talking about the football coach and not the you know the board of trustees. You. I mean, as far as the, the the excuse me, hold on, hold on, brother. You're right. I, I brought up the board for the only reason is for a raising money perspective, and I feel that by having someone like Coach Raymond Woody, it will galvanize certain people who are givers, right? And the question was, would Raymond Woody help uh, the resources for the school? And I'm saying, I believe they will. I think people would give because of this choice. Sir, once again, the giving doesn't matter if it's not spent on what needs it to be, what, what the team needs it to be spent on. I could give Bethune-Cookman $20 million. I give Bethune-Cookman $20 million right here, right now, if I had it. But if they're not going to spend it on what I want it to be spent on or the necessary things to be spent on for the program, what good does that give to the program? Absolutely zero. Absolutely okay, so zero. If you, instead of giving money and you said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to give cash. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy or build a locker room uh, on campus with showers and everything that they need. All right. So instead of me giving money, that's what I'm going to do is pay for this to be built. All right. Will that be something that will be useful for the school? Do you know the in that scenario? Do you know the process that that has to go through? The same reason they were getting on Ed Reed. That stuff has to be approved. It has. You have to bring architects in. You have to get with surveyors. You got to make sure you're not hitting the water line, the gas line, and everything like that. It's real funny you say that because that's what Ed Reed was trying to do, but the school pushed back saying, "Hey, that's not approved." But it's really funny on the flip side of that, the president is doing the same renovations to the business building that was not approved. So it's just real funny to me, but I'm going to just say this. It Listen, sir, it, it, it sounds nice. The pro, the system is messed up, right? Even if the alums give and it's not being spent towards the team, it does not matter. I don't give a damn. If you can say, hey, oh, you know what, I'm going to build it myself, and then you have to go through the politics of Daytona to get it done, and they, they deny you, that doesn't help. And then I was just told by a Bethune-Cookman alum is that the reason they keep the old buildings up is that I believe in uh, Dr. McClary, Dr. Mary's, uh, her last will or testament or trust or whatever. She said that the buildings that they were there, that when she was there, she doesn't want them tore down or, you know, uh, something like that. I, I don't know. Some Bethune-Cookman alum told me. But at the end of the day, man, little bill does not help your situation at all. Thank you for the call. All right. Uh, Mr. Campbell, coming to you, then Rocky, you're next. You know, let's, let's just go through a timeline real quick. So remember right around the Celebration Bowl, Bethune, it came out, however it came out, that they had hired Ed Reed. And everybody was excited. People was talking about going to the Florida Classic, all this stuff. And then we kept saying, what happened to the press conference? When's the press conference? Then Ed does his rant. Then the president goes on Roland Martin and lies. And now with it is, you know, what this reminds me of Scotty. It kind of reminds me of a dude that had a fine ass girlfriend, but she was crazy as hell. You know, like how Halle Berry is. And then you end up with the crackhead Halle Berry from Jungle Fever. This is what this reminds me of. Mm. This is exactly what this reminds me of because they have nothing now. They got crackhead Halle Berry. At least with Ed, and like I said, you know I was not a fan of what Ed said. I was a fan of Ed. At least Ed was fine and crazy. At least when you walk in the door, you can say, damn, that bitch, oh, excuse that Ooh. woman is crazy, but she's fine as hell. <laughs> I've been there, Scotty. I've had the fine, crazy one. I know how that feels. Sometimes you need the fine, crazy one. But when you go and get the crackhead Halle Berry, everybody just says, Steve, why you bring get a crackhead Halle Berry? <laughs> That's what we got. And I'm not saying Coach Woody is a crackhead. I want to be clear. He, I've heard he's a good dude, and he loves you. But, bro, this is what we went from. We went from all this excitement. We, had, we were getting ready to have the Eddie Epps, the Reed Epps. Dog. They were ready to come, Scotty. Dog, the Florida Classic would have been crazy. They were ready. Yeah, the Florida Classic would have been epic. The Classic would go great. Epic. Thank you. We had the Reed S and the Ed S ready to go to tell us how great Ed Reed was and how horrible HBC was all over again. I was ready for I, I was ready for that energy. And now what we got. 
We got crackhead Halle Berry. And folks looking at us like we crazy. <laughs> Come on, man. What are we doing with them? And you know, this is the thing, but I'm going to say this. And then this on got you. The only person actually that would have took this job is actually somebody that went to Bethune and loved Bethune. Yeah. Because nobody would just think about this. If you if you're outside, right, and you got a job most likely, and somebody comes to you and say, Yeah, you know that um uh, school that Ed Reed was cursing out? You want this job? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm straight, bro. I'm out. But I'm, I'm going to check you out, though. I'm going to check y'all out during the season. I'm going to check y'all out. Oh, man. So, so that's the thing, man. So, you know, that's just the thing. At least, again, I was super excited. HBCUs were excited with Ed. And this goes back to, like I said, I blame the administration. Because the Ed Reed hire was a great hire. But when you did not have your business right, and you are not on point with your AD playing basketball instead of sitting down with Ed and saying, yo, this stuff is messed up, and I ain't going to give you the keys, bro, until we get all this stuff straight. This is what you end up with. Mm-hmm. And we end up with a show, and now the man got a new nickname, Little Bill, that he going <laughs> to go on your DMs, talking about you don't know him like that. And then we go out to defend that, man. So, you know, I'm just waiting for, you know, the, 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 when you say, hey, Mr. Campbell, you know, Coach Woody, um, they'll put a cease and desist order for calling a little bit, and I got to call my lawyer and all that, bro. So that, that's it, man. That's it. That's, that's all we got, bro. That's, awesome. that's it. Okay. So I'm just going to say, first, wait, wait, one last thing. First, Rattlers, thank you, Bethune, because now we can start our 10 game win streak. That's all we needed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. All right, reset it, Mr. Campbell. Oh, my God, man. Listen, it's going to be, ah. Oh. That Florida Classic had everything. Ah. That Florida Classic had the makings to be like the black Super Bowl. Like it literally could have been bigger than the Celebration Bowl. You might not agree. You might not agree. But that Florida Classic, that Florida Classic, it would have had all the Miami players, all the former Miami players would have came out to support Ed Reed. All the Florida would have came out. It probably would have been bigger than the celebration mode. That's just my thing. It, it probably would have been. But now we got now we got Lil Bill, Crackhead Halle Berry as the coach. What's up, Rock? Hey, hey, what up, man? I really like uh Mr. Carmel's analogy. I got one I want to put up uh put on the table as well. And it's and it's even, you know, and I hope you guys understand. This was like a concert festival or a music festival that that was being promoted and you had Beyonce as the headline. And then all of a sudden Beyonce gets ill, can't make it, and you replace Beyonce with Paul Abdul. <laughs> you know, it, you know, now everybody wants their money back. They hate they ever paid attention to what was going on. They want their time back. You know, you getting sued by the, the the promoters and the you know what I mean. Like everything is just you know it's it's just a big letdown, Scotty. And that's what more so than anything, it's just a huge letdown for everybody. And I just don't, like I say, I just I don't know where we go from here. Like you you know we not are you going at this point? Are you even gonna have a, a festival <laughs> if you have to resort to using Paula Abdul? In, in place of Beyonce, is it worth having a music festival now? Oh, yeah. You know? Oh. So anyway, man, I just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just disappointed. I'm just completely disappointed. And I don't know, you know, you know, I, I don't even know if Paul, Paul Abdul can really sing now. You know, that's what, <laughs> that's really the reality is. We, we saw it hit us some notes back in the oh. late eighties, oh. early nineties, but, can she even sing oh. or dance or, or anything? She, I mean, anyway, she's just a shell of what she used to be right now. And I just, you know, it's just not fair to put, it's not fair to put Paula Abdul in that, position. In that situation. Yeah, I feel you. That's nah. what I say. And so, man, much love, Scotty. Great show. I know you didn't want to do this show, but you're doing a great job. I wasn't going to use that guy's nickname because I don't want you to, I don't want no. Hey, man, let's just stop using the names that Scotty used to describe people because it it's it makes it hard on him man. thank you and so thank <laughs> you yeah let's let's let refer to the man as coach woody you know i think that's funny enough <laughs> all by itself <laughs> coach woody you know 
you can use coach and then an eggplant as his as the emoji if you want to. Bye. But anyway. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I hate you all. This is why I can't. This is why I don't get invited to media days. This is the buffoonery. This is the buffoonery of why I don't get the crackhead Halle Berry, the crackhead Halle Berry, the the mom calling in talking about little Bill better come with uh, sponges, uh, a mop. You know what I'm saying? You got you got Rocky with the Beyonce. That's why I don't get to see. What my man, what my man said off next Friday. I gotta live here, you don't. Come on, man. Y'all, y'all see that's why I don't get invited nowhere, man. This is why I don't get invited nowhere. 9870 coming to you. Hey, calling you live. Hey, what's going on, man? This is Joe from North Carolina. What's up, Joe? Bro, do you think you think that'd be better off just boycotting the season? Because, bro, you, you're not gonna win over uh, two games this season if that. <sighs> what What you think? All right, listen, man. I think the Bethune Wildcats that wanted Coach Woody, uh, I think they'll be happy to win two games. They'll be super excited to win two games. Uh, that That's all I got for you. I ain't even gonna hold you. I, listen, man. I. If I'm if I'm Bethune Cookman, I'm I'm looking forward to softball, soccer, you know, <laughs> you know, badminton, you know what I'm saying? Maybe add a gymnastics team. But football is no longer y'all cup of tea. Football is no longer y'all cup of tea. I'll just let it go, man. Just, just let it go. That's how I do. Let it go. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate it, man. Enjoy, I enjoyed the show. Hey man, appreciate it. Yeah, I wouldn't even. Y'all be looking forward to field hockey, softball, baseball. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't – I, you know, I would look at I, – I, I would look at this year's football team at Bethune-Cookman is how you look at, like, your four-year-old, five-year-old trying to play T-ball, and you just glad they ran around the bases. Like, I would just be glad we got a full team and we finished the season. You, oh, go, little Johnny! You know, he already out already. He's still running. Go! Go, break. Come on home. Running. Slide. Slide, Johnny. Slide. Yes, yes. Did you have fun? You did? Awesome. Let's get some orange slices. Like, if I'm a dude cookman alum, that's how I'm looking at the season. Just, we're glad we completed it. We glad we got a season through all the turmoil of what was going on. We got our orange slices. You know what I'm saying? We went to the Florida Classic. We had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves. And let's move on to the next season. Let's let's move on to the next season. That's just that's just how I would look at it. I wouldn't even be mad. I wouldn't be every, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I just was, you know, I just, I was ready to just move on. You know what I'm saying? I just ready to, let's, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, fam, you've been through Cookman alone. was like, I, I was just ready for basketball. Boom. <laughs> I was just ready for basketball. Boom. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I I I've been over football like on what? Like uh why did I get married? I been got the shot. I was just waiting for you to say something. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I look at it. But all the Bethune Cookman and Loves, huh? I was ready for football to be said. I was ready for basketball. Boom. Like, so I mean it's this season's a wash. You know what I'm saying? This this yeah, this season's a wash. It, it ain't even it ain't even worth the time. It ain't worth time nor the effort to to watch. And if you're a Wildcat fan, man, just like I said, just enjoy the band. You know what I'm saying? Get you some popcorn. Get y'all ass beat and just keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it, just keep it pushing. So, you know what I'm saying? You might as well just kept Terry Sims, in my opinion. But oh man. So it is what it is. But this, this, this is all this show is worth. As a as a good hour. I don't need to make I don't need to, I don't need to extend this show no further than what it needs to be. All right. So listen. Congratulations to Bethune Cookman for Lil Bill. If you are a Bethune Cookman alum, I know you are going on a. You are on an emotional roller coaster. And for all the other people 
that like HBCU football, you know what we feel about Bethune Cookman? We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. Jerry, we don't care. <laughs> we do not care. All right. So this job was simply, you know what I'm saying? I'm just waiting for the day with that's the, that's the only day I'm waiting for. After that contract is up and you gone, all right, cool. Or you, it might keep you for 10 years because it, it ain't like they're going to be winning anything anytime soon. All right, guys, listen. If you're interested in being on Why I Love My HBCU, small interview about you talking about your inter, uh, you talking about your institution and why you graduated. It's, it's pre-recorded. It's not live. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just about 10, 15 minutes of conversation. Go to the description below um, and uh, put in a, a collect. Finish the Google form and let me know. I'm trying to squeeze everybody in this weekend so I can make it and then upload the video to the uh, the channel. All right. Also, if you want a consultation, um, let me know and things like that. Also, if you made it this far to the video, I appreciate you. Thank you. Hashtag little bill. All right. If you made it this far, you're watching this on the replay. Make sure you put hashtag little bill in the comments below. All right. So listen, until next time. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler. God bless.